How's it going guys and welcome back to the lair and today we're back in standard best of three This is going to be the deck tech video for tomorrow's uh, episode um, But anyways, I call this one heartless mauling, but before we get into it I just want to say if you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe It's free to you and helps us out so much feel free to drop me a comment talk about strategy deck ideas misplays I read the comments daily and if you have any friends or family that are into magic, please share the channel with them uh, one last thing I'd like to say for all of my new followers or subscribers on either my Twitch or YouTube channels, once you've done so, just reach out to me in the chat or the comment and say something like, hey, I just subscribed or followed, and I can respond to you with an in-game code that you can use in Arena to unlock a mystery gift from Wizards. So very excited to be able to offer that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let's hop into it. So on the one drops, we have the three, uh, three copies of Blood Chief's Thirst at sorcery speed. Destroy target creature or planeswalker with converted mana cost two or less. And then if this spell is kicked, instead destroy target creature or planeswalker. Onto the two drops, we're running the full playset of Agonizing Remorse. At sorcery speed, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from it or a card from their graveyard. Exile that card and you lose one life. Running three copies of Heartless Act. At instant speed, choose one, destroy target creature with no counters on it, or remove up to three counters from target creature. Running the full playset of Kroxa, Titan of Death's Hunger, he's a 6-6, and we sacrifice him unless he escaped, and whenever he enters the battlefield or attacks, each opponent discards a card, then each opponent who didn't discard a card, uh, discard a non-land card, I should say, loses three life. And then later on, we can uh, pay his escape cost and exile five other cards from our graveyard and bring him back to the battlefield. Running three copies of Maze Mind Tome, it's an artifact. We can tap, put a page counter on it, and scry one, or we can pay two, tap it, put a page counter on it, and draw a card. And when there are four or more page counters on Maze Mind Tome, exile it. If you do, you gain four life. On to the three drops. We have two copies of Palaka Predation or Palaka Caverns. This is a module land. It can either enter the battlefield tapped and produce black mana or at sorcery speed target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a card from it with converted mana cost three or greater and that player discards that card. We're running the full play set of Murderous Rider. Uh, this is an adventure card. So the adventure, car, uh, adventure side, swift end at instant speed, destroy target creature or planeswalker and you lose two life. And then his creature side, he's a 2-3 with lifelink, and when he dies, we put it on the bottom of our library. Onto the four drops, we're running two copies of Extinction Event. Uh, sorcery speed, choose odd or even. Exile each creature with converted mana cost of the chosen value, and zero is even. Running two copies of Hagra Mauling or Hagra Brood Pit. Another module land, it can either enter the battlefield at tapped and produce black mana, or at instant speed, and this spell costs one less to cast if an opponent controls no basic lands. Destroy target creature. Running three copies of Solemn Simulacrum. Uh, it's a 2-2. Two -two. When it enters the battlefield, we may search our library for a basic land card, put that card onto the battlefield tap, and then shuffle our library. And then when he dies, we draw a card. On the five drop, we have three copies of Shadow's Verdict. At sorcery speed, exile all creatures and planeswalkers with converted mana cost three or less from the battlefield, and all, all creature and planeswalker cards with converted mana cost three or less from all graveyards. And then finally, we have three copies of Ugin the Spirit Dragon. He comes in at seven loyalty. His plus two says Ugin the Spirit Dragon deals three damage to any target. His minus X exile each permanent with converted mana cost x or less that's one or more colors and then his ultimate minus 10 you gain seven life draw seven cards and then put up to seven permanent cards from your hand onto the battlefield let's talk about the uh mana base i chose real quickly three copies of castle lock twain six swamps three mountains the full play set of temple of malice three copies of crawling barons full play set of Fabled Passage, and one Labyrinth of Scophos. So this deck is a control deck that revolves around Kroxa and Ugin. We're going to be grinding our opponent out, uh, going into the hand, uh, taking care of threats. Solemn helps us ramp a little bit, um, draws a card when he dies. Maze of Mind Tome is going to help keep us alive against Aggro. Also allows us to either scry or draw cards if we need to. Uh, Maze, or I'm sorry, Murderous Rider is a nice in-between, also defensive spell, but also can be played as the creature to help us uh, restabilize a little bit. 
Uh, and that's basically it. We're stalling and trying to destroy everything until we can slam a Nugan and uh, hopefully win the game. But we are going to be playing best of three, so we'll go ahead and talk about the sideboard as well. So I have three copies of Cling to Dust. At instant speed, exile target card from a graveyard. If it was a creature card, you gain three life. Otherwise, you draw a card. And then we can pay its escape cost and exile five other cards from our graveyard and recast it. Running three copies of Duress. At sorcery speed, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-creature, non-land card from it, and that player discards that card. Running two copies of Necromentia at sorcery speed, choose a card name other than a basic land card name. Search target opponent's graveyard, hand, and library for any number of cards with the name and exile them. That player shuffles their library, then creates a 2-2 black zombie creature token for each card exiled from their hand this way. I have three copies of Revenge of Ravens. It's an enchantment that says whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, that creature's controller loses one life and you gain one life. <clears throat> Running two copies of Covetous Urge at sorcery speed, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from that player's graveyard or hand and exile it. You may cast that card for as long as it remains exiled, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast that spell. And then finally, two copies of Ox of Agonis. He's a 4-2, and when Ox of Agonis enters the battlefield, we discard our hand and then draw three cards. We can escape him later on by paying his escape cost and exiling eight other cards from our graveyard. Ox of Agonis escapes with a plus one, plus one counter on him. So we have Cling to Dust for graveyard hate. Also helps us gain a little bit of life and draw a card. Kind of does a little of everything. Three copies of Duress for the control decks. Necromancia is just an overall amazing card. Slots uh, can, can hit any type of deck, aggro deck, control deck, whatever we need. I would run three copies of this, but I only have two, so that's why we're running two. Um, we have the Revenge of Ravens in there for extremely aggressive decks. Helps us stabilize and also pings uh, our opponent while we uh, try and get off our, our Ugin or our Kroxa. Covetous Urge is also a great card. Can hit pretty much anything. Uh, very annoying as well combo that with uh, Necromentia and all the other control and then of course we have the Ox for all the uh, the rogues out there so yeah this is going to be the deck I will be playing this in tomorrow's episode we'll leave you at that I just want to say one more time if you're new to the channel please like and subscribe it's free to you and helps us out so much feel free to drop me a comment talk about strategy deck ideas misplays I read the comments daily and if you have any friends or family that are into magic please share the channel with them also, don't forget, if you're going to be a new follower or subscriber on either my Twitch or YouTube channels, once you've done so, just reach out to me in the, in the chat or the comment, say something like, hey, I just subscribed or followed, and I can respond to you with an in-game code that you can use in Arena to unlock a mystery gift from Wizards. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.